Good morning, my friends. Welcome back to my vlog. My name is Brianna. I am the diva behind Diva and the Divine and your healthy homemaker, and I am bringing you what I eat in a day to lose weight, yet another low calorie edition. If you saw my last vlog, I went into a detailed explanation as to why I am in a significantly lower calorie mode, the medical reasons behind that, the doctor driven test results that caused me to make this decision. So if you want to go and get the little recap, go over to that video. But today is another day of what I eat to lose weight low calories. As a friendly reminder, I am not sharing with you my specific calorie goal or macro goals because everybody is different. So what works for me is not necessarily, actually it's not likely going to be the thing that works for you. I have very specific reasons for the calorie and macro goals that I have. But I do want to share what I'm eating with you. I want to share with you the reasons why I'm making the food decisions I am making and just kind of share with you a little bit of what I'm doing. Today I only kind of sort of have meals planned. I know what I'm having for dinner because I meal prepped earlier in the week. I cooked on Monday which means today's Wednesday and we have leftovers so that is the way I run my kitchen here. Um, I cook, try, I try to cook once maybe twice a week during the work week and then the weekends. Sometimes I cook, sometimes we eat out, it really depends but my goal usually is I cook on Mondays and then if I cook again I don't cook until Thursdays and this week I might not even have to do that. We will see. So that being said, come along with me for what I eat in a day to lose weight. Let's go. I actually think it's worth mentioning that I started with a cup of coffee, um, two cups of coffee actually. The way I have been doing things is I actually start my day with my Nespresso cup of coffee because I got my new Nespresso machine. I mean, it's not, not so new anymore, but I love my Nespresso machine. But admittedly, it is a more expensive way to drink coffee. The pods are not cheap. They're between $1.10 and $1.30 a pod. And of course, of course, the pods that I like the best are the ones with the caffeine boost in them, so they're the more expensive pods. Shocker, I know, I like the more expensive option. Whatever, it's fine. So what I've been doing is I actually make my first cup of coffee during the day with the Nespresso maker, and that gives it like the nice froth, the crema, if you will. And then what I will do is I will take a second cup of coffee from the drip coffee maker, and the crema that it remains, I leave a little bit of the crema that's left from whatever creamer I put in. I'm currently using the Coffee Mate peppermint mocha creamer. Yes, a Christmas flavor. That is one of the only flavors I really enjoy in my coffee and I'm trying to decide whether or not the answer is uh, for my coffee regular old half and half or a particular flavored coffee creamer if I like coffee creamer. And I'm really finding, honest to God, I don't like flavored coffee creamers much anymore. I prefer the taste of plain old boring half and half. And so that's what I'm probably going to gravitate towards until Nut Pods releases their unsweetened peppermint mocha creamer. That is my all-time favorite coffee creamer. I bought a 12-pack last year for 40 bucks. I will do that again. I might buy two because it is my favorite coffee creamer on the face of this planet and I can't wait for it to launch. Until then, half and half might be it. But today I used peppermint mocha coffee creamer. But what I've been doing to actually start my day before before I have coffee is I have been waking up and I have been making an electrolyte mix to consume water, hydration, first thing in the morning. So what I've been doing is adding a scoop of collagen into my electrolyte mix. So I use Raymond's Relight electrolyte mix and then I've been putting Vital Protein's collagen protein in it. I mix it with a little bit of hot water because I find hot water dissolves the Relight and the collagen a lot more efficiently than cold water does. You don't get clumps, you don't have to wait as long. So I put in a splash of hot water, probably about four ounces of hot water, mix it up until it dissolves and then I fill the rest of the glass with ice and top it off with water. And I will consume that before I have my coffee. And here's why. I started adding the collagen because that is nine grams of protein. That is something that has a macronutrient content and thus I kind of cheat my own system and classify that as food. I classify that as food because I want to have something with macros in my system before I drink my coffee for hormonal reasons. And I have found that it actually works really well for me to do the collagen and the relight, the hydration, the electrolytes, and then have my coffee with a little bit of creamer in it. That somehow seems to balance things out for me in a way that works without me having to have my breakfast. So I can have my coffee earlier in the day and put breakfast off until a little bit 
later, which is how I've been running things. And meal timing, when you don't have as many calories to consume, is a lot more important. For me, personally, if I condense my meals into a shorter amount of time without getting into like heavy intermittent fasting mode, because I don't want to do that either hormonally for people who get their periods, that is still very, very important that we don't lean into the heavy intermittent fasting. It's actually not good for us, by the way. Um, so kind of a half quasi intermittent fasting thing. I do about 12 to 14 hours of intermittent fasting, nothing more than that. But I get to have my coffee first thing because I put collagen in my hydration beverage. So that is how I started my day. It is now 9.47 and I'm actually going to go downstairs and I am going to make All right, breakfast. so today for breakfast, I am having an egg white fold over. I go back and forth on whether or not to include eggs in this, and it all depends on the macro needs that I have for the day. So in the video I have, I'll actually link it right up here, I talked you through how I make my egg fold overs and the basic premise behind them. So you can go to that video and check out all the details there. But here are the ingredients that I am using today. I'm using a Mission Carb Balance Tortilla Sun-Dried Tomato Basil. I bought these at Target because I happen to be there. Um, they have fiber content of 12 grams, which is really, really great, and they have 5 grams of protein. Awesome. Um, I say this every time, but be aware that if you are tracking macros, it's, it, it's not 80 calories. What they do is they take the net grams and all sorts of stuff because of the fiber math. Um, so these are actually closer to like 120 calories instead of 80 calories. Um, I don't know why I bought these when I could have gone over to Aldi. I recently had the Aldi protein flatbread tortilla things, and I loved those. So I need to go back and buy more of those because that actually ends up with 12 grams of protein in your tortilla. And it still has high fiber content, so I don't know why I bought those and didn't just go to Aldi to get the other ones, but it's fine. I'll eat these, then I'll go to Aldi. Today, I am making this exclusively out of egg whites because with my new lower macros, um, my fat content is much, much lower than it used to be. So because of that, I need to eliminate fat where I can because I have a beef-based dinner tonight, and beef is inherently a little bit higher in fat, even though I bought the 90% lean ground beef, there's still plenty of fat in that beef. So to make up for that, I eliminated eggs and I'm doing just egg whites today. So I'm going to do four servings of egg whites. And then to get some vegetables up in here, I have 35 grams each of tomatoes that I'm going to slice up thin and chopped up bell pepper. And then I'm going to do some green onion for flavor. I have one slice of Velveeta cheese slices and three slices of Jones Canadian bacon. <laughs> Doesn't it look delicious? Oh my goodness, I am so excited. We need to take a moment and appreciate the growing, my garden that's happening here. This is broccoli sprout garden. This is my broccoli sprout garden. Look at this. I started these from seeds on Friday and look at, look at this. Look at the growth that has happened. I've done this one or two times before and I absolutely love it because you can grow your own microgreens, which is absolutely amazing. Microgreens are so good for you, so nutrient dense, which is just absolutely amazing. And I grew these in my kitchen and I get to add them to salads, smoothies, and just incorporate them into my diet, which is so awesome. All right, so I'm getting ready to make some lunch and I'm doing something that I don't normally do and that is cook myself, like legit cook lunch. But I wanna have a warm salad. We'll get to that in a second. But first I need some chicken breast. So this is just frozen chicken breast that I purchased like pre pre-frozen pre-trimmed, all that. It's the Good & Gather brand from Target organic chicken breast because they didn't have the ready-cooked chicken strips or chicken chunks that I normally get for my salads. So I had to settle for this, which means I have to cook them. On top of them, I just have some salt and some chicken seasoning and some dill pickle seasoning. Don't knock it till you try it, folks. It's actually very, very good. So once this is cooked, I will go ahead and show you how I make my warm salad. 
Okay, so a warm salad is exactly what you think it is. It's salad ingredients, but make it hot. So the first benefit to this is it's a lot easier to consume a higher amount of, oh, I don't know, spinach, for example, than it would be if you were eating it raw. And today I am just not feeling raw veg. So we're going to go ahead and let that cook. One thing worth noting, you saw I put olive oil in there. Even though you're going to see me use a fat-free salad dressing for seasonings and flavor, it is worth noting that you need to dress your salads in fat of some kind because a lot of the vitamins that you get in your salad, your greens, your vegetables, all those nutrients that you want to get are only bioavailable to you if you have a fat because they are fat soluble vitamins. So please, please, please incorporate fats into your salads each and every time. All right, you guys are going to think I'm completely insane, but that's okay. I have an apple that I need to use up and it is now too late in the day for me to have a snack because between my lunch and my dinner. So I'm adding some sweet fruitiness to this salad concoction of mine. Will it be good? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Chicken. Fat-free salad dressing. for flavor. And just in case you didn't think I was crazy enough, we're gonna put some goat cheese crumbles on top of this. I love when I do the hot salads, how the goat cheese crumbles melt. So I will put an ounce, 27, oh, a little extra, 33 grams, because I got a little heavy handed. Let's see if I can't, there we go. Good enough. And that's gonna take a second and melt and it's gonna get all mixed together and it's gonna be hopefully really good. All right, so that lunch kept me so full that it is 8.05. I just got off my weekly live stream and I haven't had dinner yet. I was just not hungry when six o'clock rolled around. So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna wait. And I am just now kind of maybe sort of starting to get hungry. So I'm gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna show you what I had for dinner. I might grab a little something for dessert, but if I do, it's gonna be really small because I don't wanna overcompensate and overstuff myself because I waited so long to eat. Um, because I have a tendency to do that just out of like entitlement of like, oh, I waited so long and now I get to eat all the food so I can be done. Um, we're not gonna do that. We're going to eat exactly what was planned, which is a stuffed pepper. And then maybe I'll have a Lindor truffle ball as my final bit of food for the day and that'll be it. All right, friends, this is my dinner, plain and simple and pre-prepped. These are stuffed peppers. I kind of improvised the recipe myself. It ended up being for six bell peppers. We had some extra filling left over, but what I put in the pot was two pounds of lean ground beef, 90%, 10% lean ground beef and um, I put two 90 second bags of words are words are hard now y'all I put two bags of the 90 second multi-grain blend that was like rice quinoa and lentils from Target in there as well a can of diced tomatoes and some cheese and mixed it all in there and then I topped it with a little extra cheese and then I put it in a bell pepper and that was it plain and simple and that is all she wrote. I exceeded my protein goal today, um, which is fine. More protein, the merrier for me. And so I consider today a win. I met my macros, I met my calories, and I feel really good. As I've been eating more produce, I've noticed, and it's not surprising because produce is so good for you, so healthy, but I've noticed that like I have, I, I'm on day two of my period today and I have more energy than I have had in a long time which should not be the case um, and I'm here for it so I am going to keep up this whole produce loving life because it's just making me so happy and feel so good which is how the good lord intended it right all the produce all the time um with you know things like dessert and whatnot throw them in. But anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up as it really does help me out. And if you want to join the community, see what else I have to share, go ahead and click that little red subscribe button. We would love to have you. Thank you for watching. Take care. I'll see you soon.